So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I hit the ball over 300 yards with my physical disability, which is cerebral palsy. So for my disability, it affects your range of motion. And for me, the power I can put into my left side. So for someone to still hit the golf ball over 300 yards, you can see that there's a little bit more to it than just physical athleticism. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do it in this video and some great drills you can do to apply to your golf game, which is what I utilize a lot to hit the drive at the distance I do. So I'm Jonathan Chan with J-Chan Golf. Let's dive right into it. So let's dive straight into how I hit the ball 300 yards or over with my disability here. So let's analyze my golf swing. So what we can see straight away is something I talk about in my videos a lot when I talk about driver is have a distance between the driver head and the ball. So you can see there's quite a little gap there between that because that's gonna encourage me to hit a little bit more on the up going through the golf ball. So easy things there. I'll put a little video at the end of this so you can see exactly that video. So ball position, off the big toe. So on the left foot, again, that's gonna help me hit on the up. So we wanna maximize what we can do with our body. We're not all elite athletes. We have to make do with what we've got. So club out the middle, ball out the front. So it's gonna help you with driver to hit more on the up. So let's go through the swing and let's talk about it. So takeaway now, let's have a look. So what we can see is I go into the takeaway in the back swing, you can see already, what am I doing? I'm nice and wide in my takeaway, distance between club and hands here. And you can see already I'm starting to lift up this left heel. Again, lifting up that left heel. Now, especially for myself, being someone who suffers with a disability that affects your range of motion, I have to lift up the left heel if I want even remotely close to a good turn in the backswing. And this is vast majority of everyone, disabled or not, is you, if you wanna get and hit the ball further, you've gotta optimize the amount you can turn. Remember, tour players keeping that lead heel down and still getting a good turn, remember, they're tour players, they're extremely flexible, they work on their mobility all the time. You're not, you can't do that, some of you, luckily can, but I know for myself, I certainly can't. So I start letting that left heel raise fairly early and even we can see it here on the down the line for another view. We can see how that left heel is raising already in the takeaway there. So let's continue to go up. We can see if we get up to around the top of the backswing, we can see how I'm continuing to turn here. Because my left heel has raised up, I've got a decent hip turn. If we look at it on the down the line as well, See, I've got a decent turn up there to the top. Now I may have a shorter backswing here, but you can see my turn has governed the length of my backswing. So the amount I can turn has governed how far back I'm swinging. A lot of you guys who struggle with an overswing, it's because your arms continue to go in the backswing after your body is turned. So this is gonna help me tremendously for sequencing correctly in the downswing. So. Now let's start that downswing and we're gonna see a very specific move happen here. So, look at that left heel. So let's have a little circle around that and look at it on both angles. That left heel is really slamming down. Now let's have a look at it on the down the line angle. Boom, look at that down straight away. So you can see what's happening. I'm turning that, but I'm also rotating my pelvis at the same time. Look what my chest is doing. It's staying fairly passive at the top there too, which is helping that club shaft shallow. But that's more putting pressure down into that ground on that left hand side there. So now let's continue to go. So I'm pushing down on the ground. What does that mean now? I've got to spike it back up. To jump, you go down and up. So if we're putting pressure down into the side, we're gonna go back up again, especially in the downswing here. So now you can see a natural thing for me, I create quite a bit of lag in a downswing. But now we're going to see that left side is really going to start to straighten and extend going up to left arm parallel now into shaft parallel. So we can see how now I'm having a little bit of a right side bend. For me, it's actually a little bit excessive. This is something I'm trying to get out of my golf swing is too much right side bend. But we can see now going through impact, look at this ball hit nicely on the up here. So I'm hitting up on that golf ball. Let's zoom in, have an even better look at it. So, so you can see the trajectory of that driver traveling through the shot here on the up. That is because 
that left side is extending at the right time. It's straightening up, it's snapping, which is getting my left hand side of the body to move up and around, something I'll explain later in the video. That's gonna propel my hands going up and around also. So it's gonna help with angle attack, that's also gonna help with my rotation going through the shot. So that slam the heel down is also I can spike it back up again and have this good upward hit and good turn through the golf ball. So let's have a look here on the down the line angle. See hips opening up. So now look at our lower body here. See now the extension is happening. See how I'm almost off the ground. I'm not trying to jump. I'm not trying to do that. It's just from the force I'm pulling down into the ground after that heel slam. Now it's spiking back up, back up through ground again through my body and then that's going into the club head for more speed but helping us hit more up that angle attack. So this is really going to help you quite a bit for having higher ball speeds. So ball speed is king when it comes to hitting the ball further. Club head speed, yes, does help. As soon as you increase your club head speed, your ball speed will increase. But absolutely, we can optimize our ball speed with just our launch conditions and that is then how we're moving our body through the golf ball. So guys, what was I doing? I was using my left side quite efficiently in my golf swing. So. I was lifting up that left heel, getting up to the top of the swing, which was enabling me to get more turn. Remember, we're not all athletically gifted tour players. Remember, these are elite athletes, especially when it comes to their mobility. A lot of them train a lot mobility-wise. And they can get these big full turns without turning their hips all too much. I can guarantee you can't do that. Maybe a couple of you, maybe, but most of you, 99% of you can't do that. So lift up that left heel. It's gonna give you bigger turn, and that bigger turn is gonna generate more speed. But then how that's gonna to apply to the downswing is really where a lot of the power comes from and how you hit a little bit more up on it by the reaction. So you could see for me, heel was slamming back down as I was starting that downswing, slamming back down. So slamming back down, so that pressure is going into that left side. That's the force going into the ground. And then that force going into the ground is only good if you can spike it back out again. So I view that in my golf swing as one movement, down and then spiking back up again. So I'm only going down so I can come back up. Imagine if you're jumping, you're going down and then you're going up. You're not gonna go down and stay there, are you? You're not gonna jump. You don't go to produce any force whatsoever. Just going down, just squatting, isn't gonna do anything for you. You need to get it coming back out again. So I view it always one movement. As soon as I'm going down, I'm thinking of coming back up again with that left side. So coming up not as this, coming up as the left side extending. So elongating the left side, which straightens the left leg, gets that left shoulder to move up and around, which then puts that right shoulder going down, spikes that power back out the ground again to where that's gonna help you as well, hit more on the up. That left shoulder goes up and around, propels the club to go up and around as well. And it also rotates you quite nicely going through the golf ball. Let's talk about a couple of drills to get for that. So two drills. First one, it's without a golf club. Seeing this all the time if you watch a lot of my channel, because I like it a lot. And that's a resistance band attached to an upright. Yeah, talking about it again. So. Get into a makeshift top of the backswing. Have that left heel lifted up like you're at a good turn and then slam it down and turn. So that's getting you separate lower body mid torso. We talked about that so much on this channel, why that helps with club path, power generation, rotation. And now what this is doing as well, is making me isolate the left heel stomp down into the ground. So I'm just gonna continually do that. It looks silly, yeah it does, but I don't care because it makes me hit the ball good. So continue to do that. That's our drill without a golf ball. Getting that left heel down, having a little rotational move at the same time. Next drill, again, without a golf ball. Grab a stick, put the stick just on the inside there, or just on the foot line here. So this is the line of my feet. I'm putting the stick here. Now what I wanna do, I want this to slide and elevate up in the air, but I'm not doing that via dragging it like this. We're doing it with my hands and arms. If I can get my left shoulder to go up and around, as soon as I start to move here, the stick is gonna raise up. So I'm extending the left side, left shoulder going up and around, stick is elevating up. So that with a driver is gonna mean hitting up on the golf ball, spiking the force back out of the ground again. Just like that there. So you can see left shoulder's going up and around. Look at the movement that's happening in my lower body as well. It looks really good. 
awesome one to do there, guys. So you can imagine doing that drill and then going into this, feeling the same and really feel like you're blending in that left heel going down and the spike up in one movement. So feel like you're only lifting that left heel up and pulling it back down so you can extend and spike it back out. So really feel like that left leg, once you slam it back down, is going into extension. It's straightening up, it's really snapping. So let's hit one here doing that exact same thing. I'm gonna exaggerate it by trying to feel that as soon as I can in a downswing. So that really creates a whippy, powerful movement. Keeps your body rotating through the golf ball. Keeps the club moving up and through. That's gonna get the swing speed as optimal as you can for what you've got. So for me, my swing speed isn't tremendous because I'm, I'm a disabled golfer. It's around anywhere from 107 to about 111, 112. So that on average. So of course that's lower than tour average, of course, but I'm a coach, not a tour player. But it's gonna make me maximize what I've got at the moment. But what it's also gonna do, more importantly, could make me maximizing my ball speed by hitting more up on it, doing it in a good quality way where I'm gonna be rotating at the same time, creating good launch conditions, not being adding loft, compressing the golf ball, because yes, you can compress the ball whilst hitting driver, whilst hitting up on it, and you're gonna be having lower or higher launches, lower spin, more distance going into there. You can do it, you just gotta move your body in the right way, and you can get a considerable jump up by doing it in distance. So, click that like button if you want more golf instruction just like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So, if you follow these things that I do, you too can then hit the ball over 300 yards.